Today we're going to be building a computer. So we've bought all the components already. So we've got a case which is a, a Cooler Master uh, 222 HAF which stands for High Airflow. And uh, we're going to build all the components up and put them all in this case. And when it's finished it should be a, a pretty powerful computer because we have got quite a good processor and a, a fair bit of memory. So before we start, I'm just going to show you what components we've actually got to start off with. This is the case, it's a, a Cooler Master HAF222 uh, and it's quite a decent case really and uh, everything should fit in there nicely. We've got everything you need here to build a computer. That's the uh, graphics card which is a, an ATI Radeon, 1 gigabyte. And then we've got a suitable motherboard that's suitable for the, the processor that we're using. And then we've got two one terabyte hard drives that we're going to configure in a RAID 0 configuration or Stripe configuration. And then we've got a 700 watt power supply. And then we've got a, a DVD burner. And then we've got some memory. The operating system and the processor and cooling fan, everything's in this box that we need. So now we've got everything together and I've opened everything and checked it's all there, we're now going to start to build a computer. Although I'm not going to put this on just yet, you should really put one of these on when you're working with electrical components that are delicate like a, a motherboard or anything. It's an anti-static wristband. So that bit there just fits on your wrist and then that part there plugs into an electrical socket. As you can see the live and neutral are plastic but you've just got the actual earth pin there so you are actually earthed. So you, there's less chance of any static damaging any of the components that you're going to be using. So later on I will be using this, it's a good idea to use one. We're going to start off by setting the case up ready to accept the motherboard. So in order to do that we're going to remove the two side panels which are held on by four screws, there's two at each side. When you've removed the screws you can just pull the side panel off by pulling it backwards. Um, we won't be needing that for a bit now so we can put that somewhere safe. Same with that side. We're just going to take the components out of the motherboard box now. That's got the drivers on it, which we'll need later. That's the manual. Now I actually took this manual out of there last night and I read it. Uh, so I know exactly what I'm doing now. It's always a good idea to read it before you start. So I've got an EIDE cable there and four SATA cables. And then this is the processor that we're going to be using, which is an Intel Core i7-920. So we can just get all that ready. I've also read the instructions for that as well. Before I remove the motherboard from the anti-static bag, I'm going to put the anti-static wristband on. So that just slips over your wrist and then that plugs into an electrical socket. So we can just remove this now. So there's a, a small lever on here that we need to press down and then lift up and then we can pull that plate up and we can remove that piece. It's a good idea to keep that somewhere safe 
because if you ever need to uh, send your motherboard back, you're going to need to put that back in it. So we're now going to take the processor out of the packaging. And grip it at the sides. What you don't want to do is grip it underneath because you don't want to touch any of the uh, electrical contacts. If you look in this corner, it's got a, a small arrow and that correlates with an arrow on the actual motherboard. So you know which way in it's going to go. Also, it's also got two lugs there and there which fit into the lug, the lug slots there on the CPU slot. So it's virtually impossible to put it in the wrong way around. So we're just going to lay the processor down in there. Make sure it's seated correctly. And we're just going to close that up. The heat sink on this particular model already has heat sink paste applied to it so you don't actually need to apply any more. So all we need to do is place this on the processor and then lock it in position using these four pins and then plug in the power to it. And that's how easy it is. You just push the four pins in and that's it, it's secured now. If you ever need to get those out again, there is an arrow on showing you which way to turn it and if you do turn them, it will come loose again. You can pull it back off. When I came to edit the video, I realized that I'd uh, missed off installing the memory. So I've just uh, removed the cover again and I'm just gonna show you how the memory goes in and out. It is actually quite simple. To remove it, you have to press the two tabs out at the sides and then that'll release your memory. And then it can only actually go in one way because of that lug there. So it will only go in one way. So you just line it up with the slots and then just push it straight down. And then just press, make sure the tabs are in at the end. So that's most of the things done now on the motherboard. So we're just going to move that back out of the way for a short while whilst we open the graphics card. So we've got the instructions. And then the graphics card, and there's also a couple of uh, adapters in there if we need them, and also the, the drivers that we'll need later on. So really, we only really need that piece. To fit your graphics card, you need to find a spare slot. So obviously, this is a, a new build. We've got plenty. We've got two, so we're going to choose that one. So we're just going to slot it in there.
and that's it, it just slots in. If you ever need to remove the graphics card, there's a small lever there that you need to press before you can pull it out again. And there's one there that you can clearly see. We've removed the side panel from the case now, and this is quite a good setup actually because it's actually got a template on there that shows you which spaces you need to put in on this plate here. It's important that you put these spaces on because your motherboard actually fastens to them. If you were to try and fasten it on there without putting the spaces in, you'd short out your motherboard. So it's, it's really important that you use these spaces. If we take a look in the box that came with the computer, we'll find the little packet there that's got the spaces in it. And here on the back of the template, it tells you which spaces you need to put in which hole for which motherboard. So if you were using a micro ATX, you'd put the spaces in A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and I. But because ours is an ATX motherboard, we're going to use A, B, C, D, E, F, J, K and L. So it's really easy now. All we need to do is put spaces in the holes that it's told us to, basically. So that's what one of the spaces looks like. It's threaded on one end and then it's hexagonal so that you can grip it and then it's threaded again so that you can screw right through into it with your motherboard screws. A good thing when you're using these is, is to buy a, a nut spinner. That's a precision nut spinner. And all we need to do with that is position the spacer in there and then we can just go and screw it into the relevant hole. And that's how easy it is, it's so simple. So now that we've put all the required spaces in for the motherboard, we can now remove this template because it's no longer needed. Now if you open up your motherboard box, you'll find a plate like that. And that plate is specific to your motherboard. It's got the correct holes in there that match up with the input and output ports on, on your motherboard. So we're now going to fit the inputs and output plates on the back of the case. Uh, you can tell which way up it goes because of the writing. Just make sure it's the correct way up and then it'll just push in from the inside. So we've put the case down on its side and we're just going to off up the motherboard. We're actually going to place it down, but we can now see which of the blanking plates we need to remove, where the PCI slots go. So I now know that I need to remove that one. And that one. So now I can lift the motherboard up and place it in position. When you've got the motherboard in the correct position you'll see that the holes will line up on the spaces that you put in earlier. So now all we need to do is put screws in there to hold the motherboard into the actual case. When you've put all the screws in to hold the motherboard in, you can then put your screws back in here to hold the graphics card in the PCI slot.
Now we're going to fit an optical drive, so we need to pop out one of the blanking plates from the front. So to do that, you just squeeze on the plastic tabs on the inside and then push forwards and it will come out. Like that. So you just squeeze those two plastic tabs from the inside. To fit an optical drive in one of these cases it's really easy because it's just held in with a push button and if I press the button in you'll see the two pins come out and they're the two pins that hold the actual drive in place and if you press it again it releases and that's the actual button there so you just press it to hold it in and then press it again to release it so fitting an optical drive is really easy all you have to do is slide it in press the button and that's it, the pins have grabbed it so that's how easy it is to fit an optical drive in this particular case and a lot of other cases you do have to hold them in with screws and everything which is a lot more difficult now we're going to fit the hard drives We've actually got two of these that we're going to fit in a RAID 0 configuration. And they're both one uh, terabyte each. On this particular case, fitting an hard drive is really easy. All you have to do is press that tab and then pull out the hard drive enclosure. And then just fit your hard drive in it. Then all you have to do is push the hard drive into the slot far enough so that that plastic goes on the other side of the lip and then just press it closed and that's your hard drive fitted. All we need to do now is connect the cables to it on the other side. So we've got most of the components fitted now, we just need the power supply. So that's the lead wheel we're using, that's called a kettle lead. And then this is the actual power supply itself with uh, a lot of cables attached. So we're just going to unpack that now and then fit it into the uh, case. So now we're just going to put the power supply in position. And then we're just going to put the screws in from the outside just to hold the power supply. So we've got the four screws in there now, which should be plenty, and that'll hold that in position. Now that everything's installed, you need to go around and connect up all your power leads, and they are actually labelled up. And that particular one sits together like that, and is your main power for the motherboard. So that one would plug directly into that socket there. So I'm just going to go around now and plug all of these leads in that we need in the corresponding place. And it's pretty much idiot proof because it does tell you on, on the end where it should be plugged into. And obviously you will have quite a few of these spur at the end. And we also need to go around and plug in all the fans for the, uh, the cooling fans and the exhaust fans on the case. The most, the most important lead is this one, which is the one that connects to the motherboard. And you'll see that that actually slots onto that bit there. So we need to put that piece in first, and then that one with the clip on, and that will hold it in place. So that's that connection taken care of. Here we're going to connect up the SATA cable from the hard drive to the motherboard. 
Uh, we've got two of these and one particular end there has a 90 degree bend on which is designed to push in there. So they're really simple to do, all you have to do is line it up and just push it into position till it clicks. And then the same with the other one. And also once we're around this side of the computer we'll connect up the power. So it's just a case of aligning the power connector and then just pushing it on. So that's the actual hard drives connected now. And then we're going to connect the hard drive SATA cables to the motherboard here on these SATA connections. Some of the trickiest connectors to connect up are these, which are from the uh, front panel. And it actually says on each one what it's for, which is that's a reset switch. And if you look closely on the back, there's an A and a G. The G stands for ground, so you know that that's the negative. You then have to consult your motherboard manual to ensure that you get it in the correct position on the front panel connector. So this is one of the most time consuming bits when uh, putting your computer together. We've connected up all of the cables now that we need to to get the computer working. The most important one is this one that goes to the motherboard. And then these connectors up here are quite important. And also the power connector here on the uh, PCI card, on the graphics card is, is important. So I'll just switch the computer on now for the first time. So I'm just going to press delete now to get into the BIOS. And then when you get into the BIOS, if you scroll down to Integrated Peripherals and press Enter, if you scroll down to Onboard SATA Stroke IDE Device, that needs to be enabled so that we can configure the uh, RAID configuration. And then just below that, you can see there that RAID is selected for the Onboard SATA. So we'll just save that now by pressing F10 and it'll ask us if we want to save it, which we do. So we just press return and it's saved that setting for us. And then when that screen comes up, if you press Ctrl and G, you get into the uh, RAID configuration screen. We're going to make a few changes in here and then we'll have uh, the RAID 0 configuration set up correctly. So we're just going to choose create RAID disk drive. And we want a uh, RAID 0 stripe which is correct. Just call it GRAID 1. We'll just enter that. 
and we want a, a RAID 0 which is correct and then it's selected both discs and as you go through to each one of the options it tells you in the out panel there what exactly it is and we're just going to confirm the creation so now it'll use both hard drives at once if you select a RAID 1 configuration it backs up everything from one hard drive to the other so if you had two 1 gig hard drives and you used RAID 1 you'd still have a, a 1 gig hard drive but if you use a RAID 0 configuration or a stripe configuration it actually uses both drives together so if you had two 1 gig hard drives it would show up as being a 2 gig hard drive So we're just going to confirm that now that we want to create RAID on the selected hard disk drives. So now what else we need to do is cursor down to the save and exit setup. And then when it says do you want to save it to disk just click on yes. So now we've got the RAID 0 configuration working. So now we can start to install Windows. So when the screen comes up all you need to do is accept the terms of the license and then click on next and then we're going to click on custom for advanced and then drive options. So now we're just going to click on load driver and then browse and then on my USB pen we should find the driver. and if we just click next it should install that for us and as you can see now we've got a RAID 0 configuration there because it's combined both of the one terabyte hard drives and it, it just looks like there's one large drive now so I'll just click next and now it's installing Windows so now we have to choose a username for some reason so I'm just going to choose i7 and click on next and then we have to choose a, a password Now we have to enter the product key.
so then you just need to choose your time zone the date and then the time And now that Windows has finished installing, we can now install the uh, motherboard drivers and the graphics card drivers. And then that's it, then that's the job completed.